welcome everybody to the fourth installment of Bits and Bobs and Surprises. And what are we staring at here? It's my Multiforme, my Epidendrum Multiforme crossed with Capricornu. And yeah, it doesn't look like much is going on here. Maybe I have a little eye developing there. Uh, but let's take this up and we'll see the end of our growth from last year right here these two bloomed last year and I thought they were quite a jump on size because this is the length that I got it and I thought yeah we're doing well but you can see on the left what is going on this year and let's go up it has doubled in size and we have buds. Ta-da! So I'm really pleased about that. It's gonna be a while before these guys actually bloom. They take forever. But I must say, the jump in size of this year's canes, I will forgive it for not bringing out two. Last year I had two canes with beautiful spikes. It is not what I thought it was. I thought it would be like a white bloom and green, white green bloom with a pink little nose, but no, they are pure white, which is fine, not a problem. But I wanted to share my multiforme crossed with Capricornum. Again, going up and up. <laughs> because now it's actually going to bloom at some point, which is awesome. Next to that, I want to show you my Angraecum Crestwood Tomorrow Star. The only thing I want to show you here is the roots. <laughs> if you remember my video, if you haven't seen it, I'll put up a card, but look at how these are coming out. My word. Remember the little branching? That I pointed out in the other video. Look at that. Yeah, and it, it's, it's extending. The tip is extending. The side is branching. The other one that stopped is extending and branching in there. The tip is doing more of its own thing. Down here, it's just going on and on and I love it. We've got an old root branching down here as well. That's awesome. I am so happy to see that this one is not going aerial. It's going straight down into the media. Fantastic. And then this one, this stonker on the side, look at that. It's like I am going down there. That's where I belong. It could have just become one of those straight out, sticking out, awkward roots, but all of its own, it's just like, yep, that's where I belong. That's where I'm going. Look, oh, I love, I love and great roots. We haven't lost a pebble yet. I'm still waiting for one of the lekkers to fall out over the edge. Not yet. But next door is Bossery, not going to be outdone. And here comes the new root. Now the previous roots from the stems actually did grow on their own into the media. I'm not sure what this one's gonna do, but it is sure exciting to see this coming out. So juicy and so healthy. I love it. There's a, they're like black spots on the root and that is from the acid of the ants when they were crawling about on it when it was still young and immature and they leave certain acids behind. This is what the Myrmacata lobolas enjoy and that's the marks on the roots. But as the root extends, those spots go get further and further away from each other. They used to be like a little cluster because you know the root was so immature but that is the result of acid of ants. In case you have that on your roots, don't worry about it. You can clearly see it's not doing it any harm whatsoever. 
When it comes to good news, what is normally the preference? The good news first and the bad news later or start with the bad news? Hmm, I prefer the bad. So my bad news is that after my first spike on my Renanthera Mona Chica, it bloomed, it didn't last very long and that's okay. You know, first bloomings, I understand that. But while it was trying to push the spike, it was dumping leaf after leaf after leaf. Not so concerning. Well, not in this case. It was concerning because the leaves were going yellow from the stem towards the tip, and I don't like that. So I applied some dragon blood. I cut the spike off, and I applied some dragon blood all along the stem there. And uh, yeah, it has stopped for now, and I'm hoping for good. This leaf has not shown any symptoms. It would be the next one to go. It has not shown any symptoms whatsoever as the previous ones did, and they were fast. If by now this would show symptoms, it's because how quickly I saw the other ones go down, and it hasn't. I'm hoping that whatever it is has stopped. The stem feels firm, but that means nothing. It can feel firm and still be deteriorating inside. I have not unpotted it yet because I want to see if I can just leave it as it is at this moment in order not to stress it out. Maybe it'll grow a root out somewhere here. That would be awesome. I would appreciate that. And then I would cut the stem off and start it again. So that's kind of the bad news on my Renanthera Monachica. It is now being supervised with more scrutiny. And here, the good news is my Ascostranthum Ampuyathea, Pink Dreamer. I was introducing it to you in a video and told you it was in, unstable in the pot, etc. And concerned about what to do with these roots as the temperatures get hotter. Well, I think I have a candidate here. Look at that. There's a root extending. This is for me great news because I'm going to let it do its thing for now and eventually I'm just going to tip the plant a little bit over to the right and I'm going to start training that root to go down into the media. So for the time being it can stay as it is. I don't want to shock it or split it. I want it to get a little bit longer and then what I'm going to do with this one is watch its development it looks like the tip is trying to grow out. Let's see, don't jiggle it too much. And with that tip, I can probably start working it if it gets long enough. I spray it every day, two or three times now. And you can also see how the leaves are going a little bit greener. I don't know if it's gonna bloom this year, to be honest, because it feels like I've got it in such deep shade in order for the, the leaves to turn into, uh, you know, get rid of all this stress, like sunburn. It's not sunburn, but at least the leaves are starting to recover and have a hint of green, whereas before it didn't. If that would affect the blooming in any way, I have no idea, but step one step after the other. These are just observations that go through my head every time I look at my orchids. So root, muy importante, very, very happy. And here we have my calicetums. I'm going to put the names up on the screen so as not to waste time with regards to names, this, that and the other. I don't want to keep my videos too long if not necessary. But there's one here that I just know its name of without having to think twice. That's my Jack of Diamonds. It is starting to wake up and it wasn't when I introduced these to you the first time. So we've got some movement going on there, dripping with happy sap already. Let's get a spider in there to take care of any nasties that might want to take care of that happy sap. Then right here is the one that I was telling you about how the growth was sort of elevated and I was concerned about the roots finding their way down. Well, the roots are still doing well. 
I'll tell you why in a moment, why I said it like that. And I've dug a little hole around the leka here so that if they go down, they go straight down, then I will fill it back up. So this one's doing really well, like really well, because the back part has decided to also produce a new growth. It's going to be a small one, but the more the merrier in my books. And then over here, if you remember the one with the three growths coming, and I said the roots won't have a problem finding their way down, well, there's got to be some that are always a little confused about what they're supposed to be doing, right? But the majority of them are going down without any problems whatsoever. And I'm very glad about that because I'm saying because the other day it rained and where these were located, they got rained on to a certain degree. Not full on rain, but there was enough to have me concerned the media was moist and uh yeah you know the thing about watering catacetums too soon <clears throat> i was very concerned that was a couple of days ago but nothing has happened to stop the roots from growing and i'm very very happy about that the spiders are very busy now they've i've already seen them climbing around and I just had to disturb them to bring them over here to show you what is happening despite having gotten wet. And here now, just to wrap things up, I want to show you my Dendrobium exile. I am expecting some buds down here. For me, that are, those are buds and we know that Dendrobiums take forever to bloom. So that's a good thing, but let me show you what I'm really happy about. This previous growth I mentioned in other videos is still doing all right. It hasn't extended. That might be the extent of its growth for now, but I'm now getting another one right here. And that is super important because I now have a decision to make. When I see new roots, I might just pot up this exili into small lava rock and semi-hydro, just like I have my tetragonum. Because it came in a pot upright. I thought it is a fantastic candidate to be pendant. But you can see what the other growth has been doing. It wants to go up. So maybe I misjudged it on this one and it wants to be an upright grower. And I am considering putting it into my same setup as I have the tetragonum. Small lava rock and semi-hydro. I'm waiting for some roots, so when I see those, I'll take you along for the ride. It's gonna look a little funky with one hanging out the side like that. But I think long-term, this one does want to grow upright. So that's what we'll try. New growth, some buds on the way, exili. Thank you very much. And everybody else, thank you so much for watching my little series of bits and bobs and surprises. Take care, everybody. Be safe. Bye.